per is perfect. Okay yeah, that's good. That's good. So um, we're going to start by looking at the CT scan, and um, this kind of goes without saying. I think we all know this, but we want to start out with a good systematic review of the CT scans. One of the things that's really nice about image guidance is that it really has put us in a paradigm in which we're always looking at tripod. I don't. Th yeah, there's no amplification system. Sorry. <laughs> So what it does is it puts us into a position of being able to look at a triplanar film, which gives us a huge amount of information, but you do have to kind of resolve that in three dimensions. And we see on, the scan, uh, on our image guidance system the axials, uh, the coronal, as well as the, uh, the sagittal films. Uh, we're going to be addressing the left-hand side today, uh, and we'll try not to take too much time so that everybody can get to their own heads. But as we start from the front to the back, we want to, to look. Uh, yeah, I'll actually take several different passes looking at the uh, looking at the parent, or the CT scans before uh, the case. The first thing I want to take a look at is the integrity of both the skull base as well as the lamina papricia. So as we advance, and I'm just going to slide this along since we don't have the the, the CT scan. Uh, we'll just slide along the floor of the nasal cavity to just concentrate at this point in time on, let's see what we're running into, we have a spur there, uh, concentrating on the integrity of the lamina papyrecia. One of the main things that we want to ensure here is that we don't have either agenesis of the ethmoid uh, labyrinth or uh, a previous blowout fracture. In, uh, the, I know this isn't really popular here, but in the United States playing baseball, everybody plays baseball. Baseball is about a perfect size for a blowout fracture. So it's not uncommon. Well, it is uncommon, but occasionally what you'll see is an area where there's a dehiscence of the, of the lamina papricia. Um, that's really critical because as uh, I think Matt had pointed out yesterday, uh, when you're using a microdebrider and you're taking down sequential ethmoid cells, if you run into a cell that's filled with orbital fat, by the time you figure that out in the operating room, it's typically too late. So the next thing we want to do is take a look at our ethmoid skull base, starting in the frontal sinus and working posteriorly. We see the slope and the height. We also want to look at the depth, the olfactory grooves. Uh, generally speaking, I don't think that I look at these in terms of Keros classification. I don't really think of that, but I do look at the depth and the, and the symmetry of the ethmoid skull base because we're going to be moving to the next side uh, uh, just a, a little bit later within, the, uh, within this uh, procedure. Uh, we want to look along the nasal septum. Are there any obstructions? We can see that there's a spur along the vomer to the left-hand side. Sometimes that can come into play. We also want to look at the general configuration of the turbinates. Do we have a concobulosa, as was just previously noted? Do we have a Haller cell? Uh, what is the appearance of the, uh, of the uh, unsynaptic process and its attachment? It looks like it attaches out laterally. And um, so at that point, after we've, uh, after we've reviewed the CT scan, we can actually proceed with the procedure. 